It's Tuesday, and you know what that means. Yes, it is IndyCar Night on iRacing. Hello again, everybody. I am Gary Gotzel. Welcome to Race First coverage of round two. Oh, actually, now round we round two, round three. Round I think we're round three now. I should update my scripts a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, season two of 2024, the IndyCar Oval Series for the Tuesday night Oval, uh, Tuesday night top split coming to you from Kentucky Speedway. As always, joining me for expert analysis in the booth, and definitely they know uh, what round it is uh, from the NHR Esports team in the Lineart IndyCar Series. He's back. He's been on assignment, but he's back finally. It's Stephen Larkamp, and joining us with a brand spanking new PC. He's a regular participant in the IIS. Has some horror stories from last weekend. I'm sure he will share with us. Justin Pashar. Guys, I'm just excited to have the A team back together and be at a track that uh, should be a fun race tonight to watch. Indeed it is. Kentucky is one of those mile and a half where a lot of people would think we're just in for some plain boring racing here, but not quite. Kentucky can definitely throw some curveballs at you, especially since the banking on each end of the track is different. And you can definitely see like a lot of people trying out different lines, trying out different ways to get past them. I think this is going to be quite an interesting show, and the fast guys are definitely going to be having their work cut out for them. Looking at uh, uh, Robert Maleczka saying he's having a hard time find figuring out tire wear. Oh, uh, That could be interesting to see as this night develops. Uh, I think this track is definitely going to throw some curveballs yet again at them. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it does throw some curveballs at them, especially with the banking over in turns one and two a little bit higher than what it used to be compared to three and four, where they just, they, they left it alone. They, they, they left it flat. Whereas with turns one and two, it's narrow. You can get away with two wide racing, three wide, uh, that's iffy, four wide. Are you crazy? What What's wrong with you? But with three and four, <laughs> you can go five wide for all we care. But yeah, it's definitely gonna be interesting. We've heard about tire wear having a factor, being a factor in this race. So it's, it's, it's gonna be one to watch and so forth. Kentucky always provides great racing for IndyCar, NASCAR, uh, let's not talk about it. And as far as the horror stories go from Auto Club, uh, if you want to know my thoughts, if you want to know the story on that, just go watch a movie with Michael Myers, a.k.a. Halloween. There's your story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, minute 10 left to go here in qualifying. Uh, Tracia did. Who and still needs to accept my friend request on iRacing uh, <laughs> is on the provisional fold of 216.598 miles per hour and uh, Panero now to the pole 216.7. CC Trace, if you would have accepted my friend request, you probably would have held on to that pole. Uh, but here is the IndyCar Series points situation uh, Robert Maleczka is your leader, followed by Hamilton Akwesi, Jason Brophy, Eric Triano, Jacob Oster, Trace Shadid, there's he's sitting in sixth, Nick Sudik, seventh, Tanner Rich. Richards, we have not seen him on the top split. Maybe we will sometime later this season. Is eighth, Roman Zini ninth, and Trace did in uh, we get he has two of them now in the top ten. So uh, Trace is now apparently splitting strategies in the standings as well. Mm hmm. And uh, here's something that I didn't think I'd be seeing as uh, I'm watching Matt Taylor on his. Um, on his qualifying run, just about to complete his only lap he's going to be getting in the session because time's about to run out. But three drivers who are not going to be posting qualifying times, Robert Maletzka III, Hamilton Akabuse, and Jacob Oster, three heavy hitters, are not posting qualifying times. They're going to be starting from the back in this race. Uh, that is going to be something to see. They're trying the first, the worst, the first challenge, which... Uh, uh, actually pays nothing uh, right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, but, it, but it gets you a hearty pat on the back and an attaboy, uh, which... Well, uh, we, we saw it at Auto Club in the <laughs> IAS. <laughs> uh, the strength of the field today is a 44.85. A new a bit of the overlay we are showing right now is uh, we have weather now, weather information, 97 degrees track temperature, 72.9 degrees ambient. Uh, your track records for Kentucky. Sarah Fisher still holds the uh, track record with the old config, albeit with a 221.390. The career IndyCar wins leaders here at Kentucky are a pair of former Indy 500 lead winners. Buddy Lazier and Sam Hornish each have two. The last IndyCar race held at 2011 was the, uh, in, uh, excuse me, was actually with the IRO5 chassis, and that was the last official 100% length race they ran with those cars. Uh, unfortunately, the next race was uh, Las Vegas, and of course, we do know what happened there, but uh, this was the last race that the uh, the uh, IRO5s ran at from a green flag to 
Checker. Help us keep the positive momentum. And if you enjoy race first coverage of the 40 race where Tuesday night IndyCar Oval Series top split and you respect the stream, please do us a solid. Make sure you support us by subscribing. And while you're at it, don't forget to smash like and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future iRacing broadcasts here on Race First. And we have a lot of them. Give us the starting lineup, Stephen Larkamp. On the pole, Adriano Pinero, a very fast run, as we all expect from him, of course, from the Bread King car. The number two will be starting on pole. Alongside him, our friend Tracia did. Please accept Gary's friend request there, Trace. <laughs> he will be starting alongside him, and we will wish him uh, wish him a good luck on that one. Bruno Romanzini, a very good qualifying run for the 17 machine. He is going to be starting third tonight. Very solid. Alongside him, Matthew Ponto in the 16 machine. Good run out of that crew as well. Nick Sadiq, old friend of the show, of course, will be starting off fifth in the number eight. He'll be alongside Beto Sousa's number 14, sixth place. Brandon Trost, longtime veteran in the IndyCar series. He will be starting 15th. He'll be alongside Antonio Estrada in the 18 machine, of course, friend of the show as always. Another friend of ours, Mark Murphy, will be starting ninth. He'll be alongside Tony Shawin, running out the top 10 in the number 13. Ty Quilla will be starting 11th in the number 7 car. He'll be alongside Stephen Lee's number 20. Marcio Baroni will be starting 13th in the 19 car. He'll be alongside Jim Wallens, number 21 in 14th. Brian Campbell will be starting 15th. That's the car number 9. He'll be alongside Alexandre Gon in the number 11 in 16th place. Rodrigo Franzoni struggled in qualifying, will be starting 17th place at the number 12 car. He'll be alongside another driver who only got to post one uh, lap time in. That's Matt Taylor in the number 10, usually very, very fast. Matt Shimko will be starting 19th in the number 24. Running up the top 20 will be Eric Masato's number 22. Kevin Grease in the 23 will be the last driver to post a qualifying time. And at the back, keep an eye on these guys. Robert Malechka, Hamilton Akabuze, Jacob Oster, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Those guys are going to be rockets going up to the field. Let's see what they can pull. Pace car diving off at of turn number four. Field under the control of Pinero. Waiting on it. He gets this foot down. Green flag in the air. We are racing in the bluegrass state. Great look at livery for uh, Pinero and that new car of his. I like it. I like it, too. Pace. Very nice looking car, and it looks good leading the race, too, as Tracia did. Trying to catch up down the straightaway. He's going to have the toe going into turn number three, of course. Looking to the low side and makes it look very easy there. And Romanzini trying to take advantage as well, moving himself up to P2. It's going to be Tracia did. Almost. Oh, it's actually going to be. It's Romanzini leading lap number one. Very good run by the 17. Leading lap so far. Yeah, you can definitely see him start to spread out going through one and two here. You can run the Mahat. You can run that <laughs> low line and the high line there. But, of course, when you get down towards three and four, you can kind of get away with running single file. But majority of these guys, they want to go three, four wide. As you yeah. can see, two, three wide, two rows deep here with Trost up on the outside. A good battle here for sixth, fifth, and fourth. Ooh. But everybody else, oh, that was close. Yeah, that was <laughs> Yeah, getting chippy already. We're working lap three of 75, but these guys are going at it full bore. They want to get as much track position as they possibly can out of this. I imagine tire wear is going to be at the top of their concern, but it's Pinero leading the way now, getting past Romanzini on that on that second lap there, and three wide going into turn number three, and in, into turn number one, I should say. I was about to say, uh, do you, uh, where, which corner was that again, Stevie? <laughs> <laughs> One of those. He, he, he had a yeah, build the, the, narrow, the narrow high yeah, end of the I racetrack. <laughs> exactly. And Mark Murphy was got the best of that whole situation there. And Antonio Estrada, I'm keeping an eye on. He's already gained three positions, making, and making hay while the sun shines here. Oh, Patricia man. did, kind of stuck in the middle there as Oof. they're battling all throughout Trost. the top six. Tross now is in the picture. Antonio oh, uh, was warming up at that 415 race, and he won that. So he uh, has. Oh, oh Estrada was in contact there. Tracia oh, did. Oh, wow. We are that riding on Antonio with that one. Oh, there. oh, oh, oh another the front stretch. Oh, More there's a contact. Oh, there's a contact. Oh, there's Into the wall. Into the wall he goes. That's Lost it on over. the apron. Race over for Tracia did. Caution is out. Unbelievable. That was I, that, just, that was bonkers. 
That was crazy, and everyone was getting a bit too flighty, I would think, early on in the race there. And Romanzini, I think he overestimated, he overestimated just how um, close Brandon Trost was. There was a lot of room, and he yeah. forced Tracia did onto the apron. And uh, what's that phrase we like to say? Uh, apron bad. Apron, apron bad, but uh, yeah. he was... Wow, and that, unfortunately we had to... Let's uh, go back a little bit more and watch this here. And I want to see it from Trey's point of view. Uh, and I'm assuming that uh, we'll keep an eye on pit stops. So I don't think anyone's really going to stop unless they're in the back. But here's Trace's point of view. I don't think so either. He just kind of comes right down on him. I mean, he, he should have been hearing that you're either in the middle or you have a guy low. And, and again, just kind of runs out again. I, I, this kind of goes back to uh, Iowa where I, I, I kind of got on my soapbox a little bit about some of the questionable uh, driver etiquette, you know, drive uh, yeah. a lot of racecraft. You know, some of these guys have been in the top split, but I think they overdrive the car, and I think that was another yet another case of kind of overdriving the car. You kind of got to know if there's a guy on the inside. He, you can't do that. You can't do that. You really have to be on your toes in that situation. There, I want to like uh, looking at Brandon Trost. He was saying that he had no idea if. Uh, that the 17 car that's bruno romanzini he had no idea that he was and that he wasn't on the bottom of the track there and people just um it can be difficult to judge in a lot of ways how close someone is at times but i get the feeling that in that sort of situation there uh romanzini probably would have seen would have seen like how much room he had and there was a lot of room to work with there but not for Trace you did down there. And I think it was just, that was yeah. just like not giving as much space as you could have. Yeah, a number yeah. of cars have uh, stopped on pit road. Uh, sorry, I'll, let you, I'll hand it over here next, Justin. Uh, Wallen, Franzoni, Shimko, Taylor, and uh, RM3, uh, and uh, Kevin Grease all stopped to top off on this caution to go a little bit deeper into this run. But go ahead, Justin. Guys, what I'm looking at from a uh, another camera angle, uh, you might want to also throw in... Uh, one of our uh, most hated, yet most common friend phrases that we always say, net code. Brazilian that clear? Was, well, net code as well. <laughs> that, was, that was what happened with uh, Trey Shadid and Bruno Romazzini. Uh, there was net code contact as well. Indeed. The, the spacing didn't help there, but net code does not forgive and does not forget either. The net code give us, and, and the net it code take taketh. taketh away. Yes, indeed. Uh, top ten. Let's do a reset. Panero is your leader. Nick Sudik uh, has worked his way up three spots to P two. Uh, Brandon Trost has uh, used the high side and is now using the very bottom of the racetrack to try to save on some fuel. He is up four spots to third. Roman Zini uh, has been up front, was involved uh, a little bit in that uh, first caution there. He is now fourth. Antonio Estrada, he's up three spots. Move him to fifth. Mark Murphy up three spots. He is up to sixth. Beto Sousa, another one of the Bread King cars and another one of that uh, orange uh, uh, livery designs that's very similar to what uh, Panero has. So we got two cars out here uh, with that very similar design. He is seventh. Uh, in the 14, and I would say that the, you know, a little uh, coyote orange in the 14 works, in my opinion. Ty Quilla, we saw him fast all day at IIS uh, Fontana. He has worked his way up three spots to eight. Stephen Lee is in ninth, and Matthew Ponto, uh, who's kind of started up front, fell back a little bit, is uh, worked his way uh, in a comfortable position in 10th. That's your top 10. I think we're getting ready to go back racing, boys. Yes, we are. Lights out on the pace car. It's going to be lap 10 we're coming to here. Everyone migrating up to that high line, starting to get bunched up here, just so if they do get the jump on them, they're not going to be able to pass on the inside. Uh, as Gary likes to say, we live in a NASCAR world with Indy cars. <laughs> right. Unfortunately true. As And now Panero gets the throttle down. Good jump right now on Nick Sadiq. Green flag in the air. I'm keeping an eye on Brandon Trost right now. He's right up on the gearbox of Nick, um, Nick Sadiq trying to make something happen here down the back straightaway. And I imagine that... Sadiq trying to get as much toe as he possibly can here. The draft is going to be substantial for these three leaders. Yeah, Tony Shawin gets a drop. Music. Sorry, Tony Shawin gets a drop on Ponto, at least momentarily. Now they're side by side in turns three and four. This is a battle for 10th. Right behind them is uh, uh, Baroni and Brian Campbell. Sadiq now the leader. Great run right now for the number eight machine. Panero tucks in behind him and Trost 
the interested spectator in this whole this whole situation here and even more interested right now i think is bruno romanzini back there in fourth position yeah romanzini just biding his time here look at tros he's trying to figure out where he can use his tires up less whether it's the high line or the low line going in through uh, all four corners here but uh it's it's definitely starting to pick up just a tad bit you figured these guys would just play it safe, oh. relatively, but this is IndyCar we're talking about. Two of my broadcast yeah. partners side by side down the back stretch. Murph and El no. Patron. Yeah, they're joining uh they're joining this uh battle of uh fighter jets, as I'm gonna call it right here. <laughs> yeah. Ty Mark Quilla Murphy. has worked Ty Quilla has worked his way up to seventh, but yeah, go ahead and Murph, go ahead and talk about Murph. Oh, oh contact. Right there. That's that's Trust. Brandon Trost from the wall there. He was leading that lap there. Big crash. People oh, screw me right him. Jacob Oster's one of them. Three cars involved at least. Caution is out, lap 13. What happened here, boys? And it's still, what it's still has too happened? Yeah, oh. still too early to pit, too. Uh, a lot yeah. of aggressive racing going on at the moment. We're watching this battle. See what happened. Trost on the yeah. high side. He just turned right. down into him. He turned down into him. That's for and that looks to me to be the case there. Brandon Trost, a little bit of a turn down there, and maybe a bit of net code involved, but it still would have been Ooh. contact regardless, in my view. And then Jacob Oster runs into the back of Campbell, who was trying to check up on this. And they're yeah. involved. So championship implications on this one for Jacob Oster. Uh, he either gets this one audited or gets this as a drop week, unfortunately. But uh, big wreck. Uh, the other drivers were Robert Malechka and uh, Taylor squeaked through. Uh, so we're back under yellow again here at Kentucky. And I'm looking at the chat right now. Trost is not happy with Nick Sudik saying that um, saying that uh, Sudik came up and made contact with him in the middle of one and two. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to double check that again. But I don't know about that. I'm gonna try to move this forward a little bit. And Jacob Oster definitely not happy either with this whole situation. He yeah. is. He is quite vocal on the radio right now. Okay, here he is. We're getting ready to watch it. Yeah, I'm seeing what I, I think I'm seeing what Sudik was. I okay. I don't see watch it. the watch that uh, that patch on the inside there, and I don't see him go up. I don't either. Like I'm watching the. I was keeping an eye on the seam there that would kind of mark a lane there, and he didn't really drift up all that much there. Sadiq didn't really move all that much in my view either. No, he held his line. Tros just went dead left in him. Uh, if he wants to argue with me, we can argue to the chickens come home or the cows come home, whatever the phrase is. Well, that's what it, <laughs> that's, I mean, that it, it kind of appears to me, and maybe when you get a chance to take a look at the replay, uh, he'll think of that maybe a little bit differently. Uh, a heat of the moment does, uh, you know, does get everyone fired up. Uh, but at the moment, uh, that now has uh, Nick still as a leader. Bruno Romanzini now P2, Panero P3, Mark Murphy P4, Antonio Estrada P5. Uh, takers on pit road. I don't see any yet. Uh, what do we got to be anybody in pit lane? I don't think anyone's yeah, coming down pit lane. Yeah, no one aside from the cars that were towed to pit road from that incident there. And. I'm, and we still have uh, Robert Malechka is the guy I'm keeping an eye on here in this case. Running 15th at the moment. Started 22nd, of course. But RM3, uh, I think he came in uh, under yes, that he did. first car. He, he did. did come in he under did. that He car did. Car. He did. And um, he is... Uh, uh, that first caution was only a couple laps in, but he has uh, some sl a slightly a little bit more fuel uh, than everybody else. He's not the only one that came in then, but he is the the biggest name of the group to come in at that point. Indeed, he is, and he's definitely the guy we're going to keep an eye on here. Did not post a qualifying time, but 
We all know how good Malechka can be. Okay. Let's see if he's got something got something up his sleeve with that stop there. I don't know if that was just to top off the fuel or to put on fresh tires. No, You're it, only was, giving... it was topped off the fuel. I, I we, we had him on the stream when he stopped uh, for RM3, and it was just a top off. Him and uh, Robert, uh, or excuse me, Jim Whalen uh, um, also stopped. So watch those two. They have a little bit extra fuel than everybody else. Yeah, and that could ultimately be crucial. There's no doubt that they're going to be fuel saving under this sa well, under this caution as well. Yeah, they're, I mean, I shouldn't say that they have a little bit extra fuel than everybody else. They are on a different uh, strategy. Oh, they are coming in. I'm seeing Hamilton Akabuze, Jacob and Jim Wallen, and Robert Malechka all diving on the pit road there. Rodrigo Franzoni is joining them. So this... I think is going to be... I'm keeping an eye on RM3 here as he comes into a stall. No. he No tires again. No tires again. So, Tops off. Yep. He's just he's just playing it safe right now so on his rubber. He's, maybe when he comes in for his tires, he gets a less of a fill and a quicker pit stop? When he does make a stop? Maybe. I don't know. Hearing some banter there over the radio between Romancini and Nick Sadiq. The top two right now. Brandon in chat, not happy. I understand, man. I really, really do. I really, I understand. We get we get yeah, caught up in the in the moment, and uh, it, it is, you know, I understand. Truly, really, yeah, I really we, understand. We, we totally get it, man. The red mist can affect all of us, and, but, and tonight was no different. But I, I know your skill set, and I know that uh, you'll recover pretty good. But uh, oh yeah, uh, getting ready to uh, recover this race back to green. Nick Sudik is uh -huh. your leader. Uh, Bruno Ramanzini is second. Panero is third, and here we go. We got Team Brazil battling Nick Sudik up front. Sudik, <laughs> Nick Sudik with a great jump, down really slow as well. And got a good jump on them going into turn number one here. Romanzini now has Pinero all over his gearbox at the moment there. Pinero trying to set up the runoff of turn number two. Going down the back straightaway. Not quite enough mm -hmm. this time yet. Here comes Mark Murphy trying to take advantage. Yeah, he, he tried, but he couldn't get the run. The door was shut. It was slammed Ty shut on wow. him. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was... Ty Quilla out of a cannon up top there. He is probably... Well... You don't really make a lot of passes on the high side in one and two. But if he continues no, to make that not. high side come in in three and four, he's going to make up some serious ground, starting the weave on the backstretch. Yes, he is. And he looks to the high side, clears him around the high side, does Adriano Panero. Beautiful run there now. Now he's trying to run down Nick Sudik. Mark Murphy, seeing what he could do here. Maybe Romanzini over as a... Uh, Maybe cooked his rubber a little bit, perhaps, or did Panero just get that big of a run? Tries to dive it down low there. He makes it work using the toe of Nick Sudik. Sudik wants these guys to fight. Sends it down to the bottom. He might have even clipped the apron on that one. Yeah, that was getting a bit airy there as Murphy clears him. And Ty Quilla now getting himself into the fray. Yeah, Murphy oh, trying to make a three one going into two turn by two one by two. and two. Oh, here we go. Oh, Try again. Oh, look, look at this. this. Four wide. Wide. Almost four wide. Oh. Almost four. Definitely three wide there. Panero now trying to look to the low side of Nick Sadiq. Door wide open there for the number two. Side by side. Panero scored the leader. Murphy trying to stick his nose and it gets squirrely on the apron. And oh. drips up almost into wow. him, but this everyone is, recovers well. This is fantastic. Yeah, they're going to go three wide. Here we go. But the door gets shut oh. on that battle for the lead. Oh, no, 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 Lap 22 of this race, this is turning into, it's Alexander gone involved, and this is turning into one of those crazy races, I would say. My goodness, my goodness, and that was a little contact between Murph and Nick, uh, and let's see uh, what happens, uh, this Murph, I think, washed up. And gets into, watch those head, the purple gloves, uh, hands of, uh, oh, right, oh, Stephen Lee! Oh, yeah. Stephen Lee Stephen got into Lee. it, but man, he saw his whole life pass in front of his eyes. 
Virtually speaking, Uh-oh. of course. Uh, let's. Uh, yeah. That... Uh, Stephen Lee, where is he? Let's uh, go back uh, about ten seconds and let's go on his car and see from his point of view. Whoa! Oh wow. my goodness! I'm. Let's I'm do it looking at... at this. He was right in the middle of the fray. Let's do it at speed. And oh, just that's had... just one of those moments oh. where. You see the car spinning. There's nothing you could do. You just hope that net code oh, blesses you there. And, and he, he did get blessed because his his car all of a sudden lost the front wing and it then regrew a new one. Is everybody else now coming onto pit road? We're firmly in the pit window. Panero down and away. Ty, Ty Quilla, Quilla with a nice really good job stop. there, buddy. Ty Quilla great with a great stop. job moving him up to second. Murph now the third. Roman Zini fourth. Antonio Estrada still in the top five here in fifth. Tony Schauen in the Power Side Motorsports t- entry in P6. Beto Sousa in that other Bread King, uh, Corinthian Bread King car. Uh, we have, I believe, four of them in this race. Uh, but uh, one of them is out, and I believe uh, you said that was Ragon. Um, yeah, it was Algon Ragon. So we got Panero. Took the brunt of the hit. And uh, Franzoni is, I think, in another one of the uh, Bread King cars. I could be wrong. But, uh, yeah, so uh, resetting here. Uh, Wallen, I believe uh, he did stop. He did stop. Yeah, everyone's on the same strategy now. So uh, Wallen move him up to eighth, Ponto in ninth, and uh, Marcio Baroni up to 10th uh with he's joined by his teammate uh eric mikado here in 11th robert maletska up to 12th and maletska slowly picking his way up through this field they're not making any any daring moves just yet but really they don't uh none of the fast guys who started in the back need to in any case uh hamilton akabuse <laughs> is another one of those drivers who i'm keeping an eye on in that sense and same with Matt Taylor as well. Matt Taylor only got one lap in in qualifying, and he is now running right behind RM3 coming into this green flag run here. And one guy I definitely uh, mentioned, uh, the guy who saw his virtual life flash for his eyes there, Stephen Lee, was running fifth coming in there, comes out 15th. He overshot his pit box. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, AJ Musselman checking in the chat. Happy to be on the sidelines. Well... Yeah, maybe maybe the early oh, portions know. of this one. Brandon Tross, I remember why I started racing NASCAR. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, AJ, to which I respond, are you, though? Are, are you really? Are you really? I, I'm just kidding, man. Enjoy the, I hope you're enjoying the show, my man. I will say this, though. I, he goes to NASCAR. I go back to IndyCar. NIS shenanigans always follow you somewhere, no matter what. Yeah, yeah it's... It's uh, it, it's eye racing, oval racing for you. There, there can definitely be shenaniganry afoot. Doesn't matter if it's, doesn't matter if it's NASCAR, IndyCar, even modifieds. It doesn't matter where it is. You can definitely see some shenaniganry play out. Dirt and... racing as well. Can't forget dirt Bristol. This is true. <laughs> this is very true. Jacob uh, did get repaired, and he will get the wave around here momentarily. Let's see how he's tracking at the moment for, uh, for Good Jacob. Question. Uh, going to cockpit view. Car looks straight. His wheel looks pretty straight. So, I'm at, and so Ulster, <laughs> he, he got incredibly <laughs> lucky. And he goes around there. He's five laps down as it stands. So, he's not really going to be threatening for too much there. He's going to be picking off uh, any sort of positions that may come his way. He's definitely going to be picking off um, Ragon and Sadiq, who were involved in that incident, of course. Uh, but r- it like this was a frustrating night for sure Matt for Taylor Jacob down Oster, pit road. Matt Taylor, as well. Matt Taylor down pit road. I think he just went in really quick to top off. Uh, he was in the box for only three seconds, so that's obviously a top off. He needs to get yeah. back quickly before they go green. They are ah, he'll get there in plenty of time. They're only coming He's out of two. Time. Yeah, yeah, and he only dropped about four positions on the track yeah, at the moment. Not so. losing much. Yeah, and and good call ultimately, especially if you're banking on not pitting again, which I imagine Matt Taylor is going for. Real quick before we go green, uh, if you're just joining us, this is race first coverage of the 40 race for Tuesday night IndyCar Oval Series top split coming to you from Kentucky. We've completed now 26, going to 27 laps of a scheduled 75. If you enjoy race first coverage tonight and would like to monetarily support us, please find a link to our GoFundMe campaign in the stream description. We realize any times uh, we realize times are tough monetarily for everybody, so uh, anything that you can give us, no matter the amount, is greatly appreciated. But we will give everyone a green flag right now as we are back racing. 
<laughs> Nero with a monster jump right now. Gets a good run going into one. Ty Quilla and Mark Murphy now playing the catch-up game right now. Or will Murphy and Quilla start battling amongst themselves here? I think Panero is definitely hoping for the latter. Murphy's tucking back in there. They're trying to catch back up to that number two machine. I'll tell you what, I'm not a big fan of green cars. I do believe in the green, green car jinx. But as green cars yeah. go, Ty Quilla has a slick looking one. It does look really <laughs> nice, that NVIDIA livery. That NVIDIA livery does definitely look nice on that number seven machine. And he's running down another really nice looking car, the new Bread King livery that Adriano Panero's got on there. I really do like that look on that thing. Yeah, everyone's and getting really creative with their liveries. I love yeah. seeing it. And speaking, yeah. of, speaking of that N NVIDIA livery, uh, let's just say that Sito, oh, he's Woo! definitely playing the game the way it's meant to be played. <laughs> yes, it is. I, 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 I had to throw that tagline in there. I couldn't help it. Here comes uh, Bruno Romanzini Whoa. thinking about the middle there. Here Whoa. comes Estrada. Estrada inserting himself into the situation right now. Mm. Romanzini oh. gets dusted by him. Oh. Oh, Quilla. Get Quilla chopping him off a little bit there. He actually apologized on the radio immediately after oh. it happened, funnily enough. Brazilian but it's Mark player. Murphy now taking the lead. Murph with the lead. But here comes El Patron, Antonio Estrada. The boss is on the march. He is right there in third, going to the bottom. He's going to block Romanzini, give him some dirty air. Meanwhile, mm. Murphy's going to try to cross over, get to the bottom of Pinero at the line. Murphy has it, and he's going to be followed through by uh, by uh, Antonio. Antonio, uh, I think it was maybe going to try to take a run at him on a pass, but wisely stays behind. So Murph and yeah. the boss, P1, P2, and they're side by side, going yeah. down the back stretch, going into three. Two, what a move. Two, two wide, three rows deep. Well, yeah, two wide, three rows deep still. And now it's Antonio Estrada leading the way right now. Beautiful move so far. He's actually on the apron in the middle of the tri -hole. He has been practicing. I watched him during the 415 race earlier today, and he's been practicing that. And oh, out of a cannon, now. here comes the Red King now. car. Shot oh, out of a cannon in his own right. Antonio, uh, Antonio Estrada gets dusted by Adriano Panero. Fourth to the lead in one lap. Beautiful play right now by the number two machine. And he is going to be back up in front. Meanwhile, Estrada meanwhile still in the back, holding Estrada it. still holding. Meanwhile, in the back, Akubwezi up to 10th. But Merlotska only can muster 12th at the moment. Yeah, and um, I imagine... Um, I know Maletska was saying earlier he was worried about tire wear. And I'm wondering if he is going into tire conservation, but we're only about halfway into this race at this point. So perhaps uh, RM3 is playing the tire game here. <laughs> Russell Wood in chat. Maybe the green car jinx is why I constantly get wrecked. <laughs> well, Maybe. Google it. it. Google it. It's a real thing, man. It's a real yeah, thing out it, there. It is. I think British Racing Green is the only allowed green, really, from the Jinx. But as as green cars yeah. go again, I'm going to say Ty Quilla, very slick. He is now back to fifth. Murphy in fourth. Romanzini in the high side. Battle for fourth right there, third and fourth. Antonio Estrada just off the right rear of Panero going down the back stretch, down the corner of exit two, down the back stretch. In terms of in terms of the green the green scheme jinx, uh, one person could technically get away with that because they won a championship with it, even though it was in NASCAR. Bobby Labonte. This is true. Well, um, Tony Kanaan in the Seven Eleven car. That that is uh, yes, two thousand four. And whoa, whoa, Mark Murphy whoa. once again playing it and playing it tough with a, an old friend of the show, two old friends of the show, having a good little tussle right now. But it's still a very close fight here. And this is what I was saying earlier, that Kentucky is definitely not one of those tracks where uh, a guy with clean air is just going to be taking off and running away with the show. We are, putting, we are seeing a proper show tonight. And I want to give a shout out to Tony Schoen in that power slide entry. He has worked his way now up four spots to six, and he is right in this battle. Guys, I'm looking at 10th place right now. It's between Stephen Lee and uh, Hamilton Akabwezi. These two are battling side by side Ooh. a little too hard there. But it seems like Akabwezi is doing everything that he can to try and, you know, he's he's making moves when he feels it's the proper time. Yeah, and Akabwezi, one of those guys like Robert Malechka, he's definitely a very smart driver, very talented driver as well. And he is just going to be playing the sensible. Yeah, dirty air is a big factor here. 
Because he went from being ninth to possibly around 11th or 12th. We have to see what uh, scoring to 10th. Yeah, he's so, just sitting around at the moment there. And uh, that's one thing, too. Like, this lead pack is getting all... Pack. Yeah. Oh, yeah, lead, yeah, lead pack is creating a huge bit of dirty air at the moment oh. there. It's hard to pick a spot where you're going to find any sort of clean air to go over the wings. And that's the situation that Akabuze and Malechka are finding themselves in at the moment. Back up to the main pack, though. I mean, just look at this gaggle of cars right here. Murphy's trying to figure out, okay, where do I try and get a good run to come off a of turn two over here? That way I don't get hit that brick wall of air from the dirty hair. The dirty hair. I haven't had any Kentucky bourbon this week, so don't. Rock don't, on. Don't, <laughs> 84 degree track temperature, 73.2 ambient. That's why we're a little racy right now. Everyone's all pretty much still on fresh tires, although we're 17 laps running along with RM3. He has now caught this group. He kind of, I, I, I'm thinking he kind of just let him come back to him. Is it, is, He's on the outside of Hamilton. Steve, is that yes. Steve Lee on the inside of the Davidius game? Yes, it is. It's Stephen Lee. He just pulled a monster move. No doubt about that. He is up to fifth once more. The 20 car is on a tear. He had himself some good moments in the IAS race at Fontana as well. So I heard. Yeah. 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 And Lee definitely having one of those flashes of brilliance at the moment. He's always been good. And let's see if he can really shine tonight we're in a field of good drivers let's see if he can what he can pull here tonight 18 cars in the lead lap 19 still running last car uh running is jacob oster who was involved in that one of the earlier cautions uh but he is still uh, making laps and uh, going to try to get some valuable points here uh but uh, 20th on down as we're gone sudik trust campbell and shadid uh they are the uh, remain the uh, bottom of the uh, standings at the moment but uh, up front and strada and panero continuing to slug it out and also keeping an eye look who's just about to firmly join this lead pack it's hamilton akaboise in the yeah. number three he is latching himself onto the tail of this pack here and he's gonna be looking at this oh, with yeah, look great right anticipation him. Well, goes right behind him, and look who's yeah, right behind Malech. them. You got Robert Maleska, yeah. and then shooting up the middle here in this three-wide battle, Matt Taylor. Oh, Taylor, yeah. there it goes! Big wreck! Waylon oh, and geez. Taylor, Waylon and Taylor. I believe it was Waylon and Taylor. Waylon way up high there in the wall there. They're keeping it green for the moment, and Matt Taylor is also involved in it too. You were right. Both those cars are busted up at the moment. What has happened to them? Well, I think he uh, Taylor tried to go up the middle, and the door kind of closed on him. Ponto and uh, Waylon just kind of start coming together as they're setting up for the corner, and I think Waylon might have came up a little into uh, Matt, didn't know that uh, Matt was going to shoot the center, and uh, that's where Matt – but that's one of the risks that happen when you shoot the center. Yep. Like, I, you had – I was looking over at where we, the boot, our boot is literally right next over to next door to race control. I'm looking over, I'm looking at, and it's Barnhart, and I'm going, what the heck is, what the heck? <laughs> yellow. He just looks at me and shrugs his shoulder. <laughs> yeah, or it's, uh, well, it's the guy that was in the flag stand for the NASCAR race at Dover I was at a couple of years back, where I was wondering if the guy Do didn't a, realize there was actual rain on the track. We have a virtual oh, Barnhart that, that, that we have to deal with. <laughs> oh, Panero! Oh, I think so. Oh. To make a little, he that was a block. That was a reaction to what uh, Antonio was that, doing. Yeah, that was a choppy move for sure. But look who's taking advantage of all this fighting at the moment. Malechka. Robert Malechka up yeah. to seven. Look at this. Yeah, these guys need to really quickly audit what's around them and say and then find out what's behind them and decide that are they going to continue to battle this out, which only is benefits RM3, or are they going to start getting in line and start trying to get some single file racing done? Because all this racing side by side does is just opening the door for Robert to uh, make the worst from first challenge a real thing today. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and he's already up to fifth at the moment, and now he's gonna take Romanzini oh, around the outside. Romanzini is like he's standing like, still. Oh, beautifully done, Robert Malechka, doing what we expected of him late in the going. We've got 25 laps to go next time around, and now one of the heavy hitters who started in the back is now inserting himself into the fight for the win. Yeah, uh, he was, but look, he hit that dirt. Like I said before, oh. he just pulled there. Roman Romanzini tried to get the run. He also hit the brick wall of air. So the brick wall of air is literally just shifting to 
who it thinks, ah, nope, yeah, you stay back there for a bit. But he, as I was saying, here comes Malechka. He's trying to get that run on the high side of Mark Murphy. Thinks better of it. Tries Murphy to go down. down. Oh, Murphy slows oh, oh, oh. even more. But oh, little, they're going to go three wide. Okay, going so we three got a wide pack again. of 11 cars now. The pack of 11 cars in this lead pack. Last this two in this pack is Baroni and Franzoni. Oh, this is a great Mercado, 12 car pack. This is awesome. This is a, this is a great race. Oh, this is fantastic. It's, it's fantastic. But it's also, like I said, it's ingredients for a massive wreck. If one wrong move happens, but right now, oh, oh it's putting on the best. I saw him oh. He's taking a big lunge in the turn number three. Hits the hits the, uh, the dirty air of Adriano Panero, and now Estrada gets back around him on the outside once again. I think he's no. Malechka does lead him over the line there, not by too much. Ooh. But Ramazzini's now Malechka there just a little bit going into turn one. But here, like you said, here comes Maletska. He's got that run. Holy cow. To the high side, Maletska in the three. He's going to get the high Big side of the work. He's going to cross. He's going to cross. He's going to cross Panero. He gets He's underneath him. Panero oh. wasn't expecting it. Now we have a change for the lead. RM3 to the lead. Great move. I don't think Panero was expecting it, and he really wasn't in a position to protect it. And he does a Brazilian clear oh. right in front of Antonio. You were talking about racecraft earlier. We definitely saw that out of RM3 just now, and these guys were left dumbfounded by it, but Panero not taking it lying down as we expected. Coming off the floor. Around the high side, look at this. Look at this battle here. Across the line, three, about three one hundredths of a second at the strike. Get in there, Justin, what, what get it? in there. What was, it? what was it that was said in uh, the movie Rush? And he sold him a dummy. <laughs> yeah, he did sell him a dummy there. And Estrada trying to peek on the low side once more. Murphy and Estrada, what can oh, they do about this? this? We got we got almost four four lanes of two by two going into turn one. Like I said, that NASCAR here in Kentucky was hit and miss. IndyCar, we always put on the best damn show you could ever imagine. Oh, and here comes Hamilton Aquapoise on the inside. They're going to go three wide going into turn number three with Mark Murphy on the outside, Ty Quillo in the middle, and Hamilton Aquapoise on the inside coming up a four. Murphy with a rocket launch on the outside there, but Hamilton Aquapoise now starting to get himself into the game here. I was wondering if we were going to see that late on in the race, but no doubt about it, that number three car Ooh. smells an opportunity for a victory. Oh, he's going to force oh, it. Three wide. Mark. Forcing it gonna three give him a wide. On the top, but that's going to give Mark a big <laughs> run on Panero, and he'll get the position. He clears it. So now we have RM3 up front, AK3 uh, at P2, and Murph in P3. And Adriano four wide. Panero is in fourth. Here comes El Patron. Oh, Antonio know. Estrada on the bottom. He's not done with this battle yet. No, he is not. And Akabuze now trying to take the fight to Maletka around the outside. Can he get the launch on him? Can he do it? I think he's got it. I think he's got it. He does this yes, time yes. around. And look at Panero taking it three wide. Three wide still side by side Ooh. in there. Well, it was three wide. Now it's back down to two wide. Panero looking for any sort of gap he can get up on that high side. Mark Murphy got himself... Clear of uh, Tony. Sh uh, was that Tony Shawin now getting himself into the it's game? Yeah, there's Tony Shawin right, right on his, under, underneath him. Don't count out. Don't count out Ty Quillo though. He's on the inside of Mark Murphy. Don't count out any of these guys, really. Oh, that's tight going into one. Oh, it is. Oh, still holding it right Murph. inches there. We're riding with Murph right now. Murph had to really roll out of it on the high side in three and four last time. That's what got, cost him nearly two positions. Definitely won. Here he is. There's a Panero. He probably could have cut down and gone underneath Panero like uh, we saw um, RM3 did. Probably he so. But he cleared, yeah, he cleared Tony Shawin with that move there, does Mark Murphy. And now trying to get a run on Panero and company here. <laughs> As the guys behind them starting to get chippy back there in that battle for fifth. And look at Tony showering on the low side. And the Strata. Not enough. Not enough. Not quite enough. Yeah, we're start, we're getting in, we're getting close to uh, 10 laps to go. It's getting that time where the Haymakers literally start getting thrown out. As we can see in the battle for the lead here between Robert Malechka and Hamilton Akaboise. But here comes Adriana Panero. They're going to go three wide again. Going to turn number three with two by two. And maybe more two by two, no single file, as they come off a of turn four. And um, and Akabuse 
getting the better of that particular little tussle there as Panero trying to make that high line work as much as he can right now. But all this is right now bringing those cars behind them back into the fray. Antonio Estrada, Mark Murphy, Ty Quilla, Tony Shawin, they are all lining up for a chance. As we're getting to close to 10 laps Ooh. to go, it'll be 12 this time by. The GDR Sports page in, in uh, chat says, Pack Racing is dangerous. Well, thankfully, it's all virtual. Nick Sudik says, Tire wear might come into play here soon. I believe that wholeheartedly. And they're throwing haymakers that we also see. That we have not seen a, a, a fight like this at the front in a very long time in the in, IndyCar Oval Series. This is fantastic. Six one thousandths of a second was the margin between Acapulco and Maletka on that last lap. This time by five one thousandths. <laughs> Unbelievable stuff we're seeing at Kentucky Speedway. This track gonna... never disappoints. Oh, oh it's contact! contact. It's, it's, it's Panero, Panero and Estrada. That's Panero and Estrada. Panero in the wall hard. He is well and truly done. Estrada has a broken nose. Caution is out. Ten laps to go this time. Wow! <laughs> oh. Here we go. We're, watching, we're, we're riding along with uh, Adriano here on replay. And he has Estrada to his inside. Yeah. yeah. This... Ah, that's a wash up there. Nothing more you can do. Yeah, that was just... Yeah, he, he, Estrada he, he, just he, washed he, up a tiny bit. He, he got understeer from the dirty air behind... Robert Molesta and Hamilton Akaboise. Nothing more you Absolutely. can do on that one. Yeah, we'll yeah that was here just again. that was just a rough racing incident there. Sadly, especially these... especially with the sun coming out from behind the clouds, it's going to warm up that track and it's going to get it is you know just a little bit slick, a little bit greasy. Oh yeah, it well, is he, he starting does, to get. He doesn't really. He, he wasn't given much room. He does come up a little bit, but their corner on corner exit. So I was watching that uh, that patch line again, and he he stayed right on it. Um, now whether his car is damaged or snapped back in the place, let's give you uh, your weather information is on the screen. Everybody can see that 92 degrees track temperature, so it is getting hotter. 73.1 degrees now. Um, so uh, let's see, are there any takers the pit road, anything like that? I see a few. Yeah, Ty Quilla is the lead of those cars coming on to pit road. In fact, and a whole bunch of the guys towards the back of the top ten are in as well. So going for the last set of tires that they had available, this is going to be really interesting to see because Malechka and Acapulco, they didn't like all the leaders staying out here have older rubber. I'm wondering how yeah. big of an effect that's going to have on Tyquilla. Yeah, let's uh, uh, well, let's uh, give everyone just, uh, the, the rule set real quick, just in case you aren't aware. Uh, the IndyCar Oval Series, formerly known as the IndyCar Fixed Series, uh, it is, uh, of course, fixed setup, and you get three sets of tires, one set on your car, two in the pits. So most everyone just went for their last set here for this uh, last bit of dash. But in the meantime, Robert Maleska, Hamilton Cabuese, Mark Murphy, Tony Shawin, uh, and Bruno Romanzini are staying out on uh, 43 lap old tires. Also out there and moved up mm. due to track position, Kevin Grease. Let's give him a shout out here. He is in the six, grease man. He is in sixth spot. He is in that plain black wrapper right there. He is up 15 spots. So a lot of the guys that started in the back have made their way up front. Keep note of that uh, because uh, those guys uh, are now putting themselves in a position to shoot it out at the end here. The first car off the pit road we are showing, and you mentioned that in uh, uh, in the broadcast here, is Ty Quilla. And there he is right there in seventh with brand spanking new tires. This is going to be yeah, fun. This, this is going to be, this gonna be the, yeah. One other thing to also remember, uh, not just tires these guys were going for. Uh, Antonio Estrada had to go and get a new nose cone as well. Yes, that's true. And he is back out on track there as Antonio Estrada. And talking about the uh, contact they had and that Estrada had there with Pinero. Panero in the chat there, taking the blame for that one. Uh, he said that uh, may have been his fault. So uh, it seems like uh, no, seems like uh, it, it's disappointing for sure, especially for Panero being in a position to win this race. But he's willing to admit when he possibly made a mistake there, and that's I think that's always good sportsmanship there. Yeah, I, I think and, I, I think he kind of I don't know if he came down on him, but he doesn't. He wasn't giving. 
Antonio any room on corner exit, and you got to give a little room yeah. on on corner yeah. exit. Um, although, to be honest, and we hear a lot of cars trying to burn off fuel, it it the out, the guy on the outside does not have to give you any room unless they don't want to. You know, if they don't want to, they don't mm -hmm. have to. Um, so uh, he's uh, nice to see. That's how I saw the replay. It just got a little crowded yeah. down there. I didn't really see yeah. Antonio go up on him, and I really didn't see, to, for that matter, uh, uh, Panero come down on him. Other than Panero really pinching him to the bottom. That was just a racing deal. It's more like it. I I'd agree. That was definitely a racing deal there. I mean, you're fighting now for a potential win late in the going there. And I think at that point, uh, well, as far as Panero was concerned, uh, you're next to me. You either lift or you hit me. So let's ask chat. What do you think, AJ? You were talking about what do you do? What do you do? Uh, well, we saw that a number of guys went in the pit. So uh, do you, does the greatness of Robert Malechka hold off brand new tires from Ty Quilla? What do you think, AJ? Yeah, it'd be an interesting question to answer oh. there. I heard somebody grenade on pit road. Uh oh. Yeah, someone uh someone popped their motor there. Yeah, I, I heard Alexander Gone actually just pop a motor just now. Yeah, they're, they're coming just, down they're the just back their stretch. cars run, I think, without uh uh yeah. leaving the session, probably helping their teammates. Yeah, you could just trash the motor when it's done anyway. Sure. But, yeah, but now, lights out on the pace car. It's going to be six laps to go. Oh, Malechka, Akaburze, <laughs> Murphy, Schoen, Romanzini, Kevin Grease keeping an eye on Tyquilla, of course, back there in seventh. What can he do? But this is going to be fun. Going back to green on lap 69. Very nice. It's going to be chaos. Oh, this is going to be a very nice finish indeed. As we're waiting on Malechka, green flag in the air. Can he hold his own here? We'll see. Not, it's going to be interesting. Not. Yep, running down on the apron there. Going into turn number one. Akapurze, the guy I'm keeping an eye on at the moment. Malechka got a great jump at the okay, moment here. Two cars here. past Greece. Two cars past Greece. Quilla is now passed. He's bringing Fran, uh, Rodrigo Franzoni with him. Yes. Ty Quilla now. Already picked off one. He's now on the back of Romanzini at the moment. Akaburze has caught back up to Robert Malechka, though, for the lead of this race. Five laps to go. Look out on Mark Murphy, though. He's moving his line, adjusting, getting that run built up to try and get around Hamilton Akaburze. I don't think it's going to be enough. He's going to have to try it again with a little bit of help from Tony Shawin behind him. Quilla Tony underneath Shawin. Yeah. Uh, Quilla Shawin. underneath Romanzini. Quilla <laughs> clears. Still has Four time. Wide. Four to go. Three wide and turns one and two. Watching from Ty Quilla's point of view. They're going to go four wide down the back stretch. That's but, real smart. I <laughs> do anyway is Mark as uh, Tony Shawin at the moment, but Acapulze mm. really looking for any way to get a launch on him. It was eight one thousands at the start this time. Acapulze is going to lead that lap. Three more. Mark Murphy now to the high side. Three wide ones more in one Here's and two. Quilla. Here's Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ty Quilla. Ty Quilla is here. The tires are working out really well for him at the moment as he looks to the low side. Yeah, but he stalled out on that run going into turn three. He's going to try and have to make another attempt at it. It's closing in. We got at least two or so laps to go. There no. we go. Three wide. I don't oh, think. I don't think. I, I don't think a high side in turn two is turn one and two is the way to go. Oh my god. Look down at Franzoni. Oh, Rodrigo Franzoni on the low side. Here comes Stephen Lee as well. This is going to be quite the fight. Last oh, lap. Everybody. Right flag in the air. You're going to try to make it four wide. Four wide on the apron there as they head into turn one for the last time. Malechka leading the way. Akapuze. Doing everything he can. He needs as big a run as he could possibly get. Quill is there. Quill is there. Quill is now. He's trying to get himself into the situation here. Oh, he not pulling it up. Drips up high. Maletska down low. Akapuze trying to get the last here for the photo finish. Not quite enough. Robert Maletska wins. 18 one thousandths of a second at the stripe. Maletska. Edges out Akapuze and Franzoni made it three wide at the line. From worst to first, Robert Maletska with the strategy there. And it looks like, is that? 
Oh, <laughs> they would pick of Oster. Oster uh, takes uh, out the winner after the checkers. <laughs> oh my goodness me! And Murphy now hits Agaplize. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I mean, I know Oster was not happy about that race there, but... <laughs> but take a bow. Both Malechka and Akabuze, they... I think they both won the worst to first challenge. I mean, Malechka won the race, but Akabuze gained the same number of spots there. And there he is. There we go. <laughs> and Nyquil was in there, too. <laughs> it, it, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a party featuring Jack Daniels. Ladies and gentlemen, please drink responsibly. 21 meets 21. <laughs> I thought that was in 10. Well, that's in Tennessee. Don't forget. It's Tennessee whiskey. Uh, all right. Uh, let's take a look no. at the results. Uh, your winner by 0.018 seconds over P2 is RM3. Uh, we have Hamilton Akabwezi here, P2. And uh, just missing out on uh, getting P2 and the win, actually, by 0.55 of a second as Rodrigo Franzoni, Ty Quilla. Uh, and uh, each one of those guys, uh, first, your your bottom, uh, second, and top steps to the podium, up 21, up 21, up 14. So that's 21 spots each gained for Molechka and Akabwezi, and 14 for Romanzini. Ty Quilla, great run for him. Looks so close there with those new tires. Would have loved to talk to him in the interview afterwards to see his reaction of uh, getting the, getting this uh, podium, because I'm sure he would have been excited. But, but fourth for him, good. Up seven spots. Stephen Lee, one of his best finishes here on the top split in a very long time up seven spots finishes fifth murph i'm sure he's not gonna be very happy with this but I th i'm sure he'll take this top 10 home and bank it he is sixth up three spots tony shawan first appearance of a long time here on the top split broadcast up three spots antonio started eight finished eight i'm sure he wanted a little bit more a name we didn't really talk about all day long matt shimko finishes ninth marcio baroni finishes 10th mikado romanzini susa Grease and Ponto, your top 15. Panero, this might be a drop week for him. We'll see. 16th, Oster 17th, Wallen 18th, Taylor 19th. Ragon the Sidewinder is in 20th. And the remainder <laughs> of the field, Sudik, Trost, Campbell, and Shadid round out your 24 car field. And Stevie, to answer your question, it may be it may be made in Tennessee, but they label it as Kentucky Bourbon. Yeah, yeah. That uh, not sure how the not sure how the purists like that, frankly. I, it, it, who cares? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's good bourbon. Come on. All right, but let's still, uh, let's check. Let's uh, wow. chat here. What a, what a finish! And uh, we got uh, Maleska at Akabwezi. So uh, let's bring up. I don't think we'll see Franzoni. Um, I don't think he's actually in our, our Discord, but we'll bring up Hamilton first. Uh, Hamilton in here with uh, in the booth with Gary and Justin and Steven. Uh, everybody just out there throwing haymakers today. Uh, was it exciting from your point of view as it was from our point of view? Um, I'd say it was pretty <laughs> fun, but like for that first bit of race, we saw how packed up everyone was and we're kind of just waiting for them to wreck each other enough times that we could go up there. But um. Yeah, it worked out. It was fun. Couldn't beat Rob. I was hoping the outside would work a little better, but it's kind of difficult when you don't really have much room with that many cars around you. Um, yeah, try my best. Uh, and yeah, we were just saving tire in the middle of the race, waiting for a shot. Guys, got yeah, any questions for him? No. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. No, I'm, I, I, I got no questions for him because I'm still trying to catch my yeah, breath. I think here. all of us are. Uh, 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 did you really uh, think that this would be a pack race? Kind of, it was like an unofficial pack race. Everyone was really kind of slow. You could throw a blanket over them, but really it was, I think, the, the tires that, that the people were able to see save were keeping them in the race as well as the, uh, the draft uh, everywhere else on the track. But the tires that people saved kept them in the race in turns three and four. Is that what it looked like from your point of view? Uh, yeah, it was like pretty packy because the track was like definitely a lot colder than I would hope for, and um, and also the wind like helped out a bit. Um, yeah, pretty packy, but you're still able to make moves, like especially if you had better tires like we did, it was pretty easy to get past people. So yeah, have fun. All right, well, good. I'm glad you had fun. It was uh, fun from our point of view. Uh, shout out to anybody who wants to say hi to sponsors, teammates. Go right ahead. Uh, 
I don't know. Shout out i5G. Uh, yeah. They deserve a shout out. Yeah, shout them out. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations on the uh, third step here. I know that uh, you and your team are obviously getting ready for the month of May. So uh, just kind of another warm up for that. Congratulations. And uh, hopefully we will catch you in the next one. Yeah, thanks. He is like the most level shows, you know, yeah, I got, got a third. Got a third. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of a Kimi Raikkonen kind of uh, <laughs> yeah, the Iceman. He very, is the Iceman. Very much, and, and maybe, maybe we uh, that's maybe that becomes his new nickname because that's that's kind of just yeah okay yeah I did my race and we this is my strategy and it worked out and everything okay all right well yeah. uh, Hamilton finishes uh, uh, we got him uh, finishing uh, second here uh, just by the and there was being up Robert Molechka now. RM3, RM3 up here with Gary, Justin, and Steven. Man, the worst, the first challenge. I said it pays, uh, it pays nothing. Uh, if we could pay somebody, we would, but uh, it's just not happening here uh, with uh, with no sponsorship on the worst, the first challenge. But man, uh, you sure made it happen. And for a while, we heard you, and we don't know. Maybe you were sandbagging people during practice that you were having a tough time with tire wear. We kind of highlighted you mid race, and you're kind of caught mid pack and haven't made your moves yet. We're just kind of waiting. And you eventually did make your moves. Were you concerned about tire wear, or were you playing a little rope a dope with people? Uh, yeah, I was concerned about tire wear. Not like me personally, but it's just based on last night. Um, we had some pretty high dag. Um, so I kind of just went tire conservative and was planning on you know people just kind of blowing their right fronts off. So which I did last night, and I was able to pass like 10 cars in like five laps um it worked really well last night so uh yeah i just kind of not only tire wear but you know I, I think we had like 24 25 cars and it's a notoriously net cody track so it was kind of just riding around and biding my time mm -hmm. yeah, you got a yeah. question for robert yeah go ahead no you go ahead now but like uh but that whole um that whole battle there, I mean, obviously keeping it in a pack race for quite a while, for pretty much the whole race there, it's not something we normally see on the mile and a half tracks here. And, I mean, going off of other races you've done, it may have been something that you anticipated, but uh, did you really expect, uh, like, uh, what, did you, what did you expect of, uh, like, how hairy this was? Because we saw quite a few more yellows than, yeah. than we would have seen normally. Yeah, I mean, I was, you know, I called it Studic, uh, Jacob, and Hamilton, and, like, we were kind of all shocked at the track temp because at least yesterday and sounded like earlier today that the track temp was a, a quite a bit uh, warmer. Um, so, I mean, at least last night, like, it, it was packy to start, but it, it spread out fairly quickly to where, like, you really had to manage the tires, but it seemed like today it just didn't really do that. I don't know, know if that's based on because of the yellows or what, but, um, yeah, it was way more packy than what we expected and i think that's the reason why you saw so many crashes as well that yeah, track temp was only 90 degrees so it really yeah. wasn't that much and the ambient wasn't super hot either well uh another week another win um you are the points leader in the, the series so far we're heading off to uh another oval here again next week that uh, you're going to be good on your thoughts uh about next week and also uh, my, our recommendation is uh, bring this setup back to this track again next time whenever it appears on yeah. the schedule. Yeah, the setup seems good. I mean, we were kind of worried that the the rear of the car was a, a or sorry, the front of the car was a bit too low, but uh, there's still some solid adjustability, which is always great to see. But I believe uh, next week's Auto Club, mm -hmm. and I think the the big question with Auto Club next week will be, you know, we haven't had a hot race there in like at least two, three years because there's been some glitch or something where it always generates the coolest temps possible. So it's a massive pack race. <laughs> so I think next week will be very interesting to see like if do you need to manage your tires? Can you hold the white line at all? Like we don't really know. That's probably the biggest wild card in my opinion the whole season is what will Auto Club be like with a much hotter track temp than what everyone's used to. So yeah, we'll I mean, see. How we've, we saw that in the IIS. Exactly, yeah. Which, I mean, I think the, the fix setup was actually really good in, in the hot. Like, I mean, you couldn't run the white line at all, but it seemed it, it 
could hang on to the, the big boy sets. So um, I think we'll definitely put on a show like always. Shout outs, friends, family, whatever you want to say, man. You earned yet another opportunity here to uh, give it out on the, yeah. on the Top Split broadcast. <laughs> Honestly, I got nothing for you guys. Kind of showed up, raise, rinse and repeat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just put it in the washer, wash, rinse, wash, rinse, repeat. Same exactly. Old thing. <laughs> I <gotta> do. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Savor the win, and we'll see you at, uh, well, we know you're good at Fontana, so uh, we'll probably expect to be talking to you in a week or so, but we see because, uh, you know, we have to run the races. If we were, if everything yeah. looked good on paper, we would run races on cardboard. So uh, I, I will say this before, before he goes, not only is he damn good on track at Fontana, He's also one of the best photographers out there. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Hey, hopefully, hopefully we can do another photo like that this or next weekend. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, we'll see. All right, Robert. Congrats. We'll catch you next week. Yeah, thank you guys. Take care. Whew. Boys. Uh, well, first of all, it's yeah. good to have the A team all back. Uh, yeah. And then uh, rocking it with a new PC uh, is as Justin, and that uh, helped out things. I hope everyone at home had as much fun as we did. Uh, I think uh, this was a great race, uh, and I hope to see Kentucky again back on the schedule with this setup and, uh, and hopefully similar races in the future. And if it's going to be like this in the future, maybe maybe it's a possibility of a double header uh, when we come back to Kentucky. Who knows? But guys, uh, starting uh, with you, Stephen, and then on to Justin to kind of close it out. Uh, thoughts, final thoughts before uh, we close out here, and then move on to Fontana. Why isn't Kentucky on the real IndyCar schedule anymore? <laughs> like, I mean, I know this was, I know this is virtual and it was getting a little bit more hairy than you may expect there in the, in the real world in IndyCar. But this track, if you want a track that can confirm that mile and a half can be enjoyable to drive, enjoyable to watch, Kentucky Speedway, definitely it, especially in the IndyCars. And we saw that tonight. It, I think it was like probably the ideal situation there. We had uh, track temp that facilitated pack racing. Everyone was getting um, getting really aggressive, getting smart as well, but aggressive is the key word there. Uh, especially like later on in the going when we were realizing what kind of race we were in and after uh, <laughs> a lot of the craziness uh, started, to, started to dilate. It was crazy the whole way, but this was a fun one. This really, one, this really was a good one here and Open Auto Club uh, can be more of the same. It certainly is capable of it, but we'll see if Auto Club can top it. Justin. Wow. That's uh, that's a little bit of what I can say. It's just, wow. It's about time I've... It's about time I got back in the booth to actually finally call these races live <laughs> as they happen <laughs> and not being, on a, not being on the Discord app on the phone, but... Wow, that that was that was one of the most exciting races that I've seen uh, here in Kentucky. God, who knows how long? I guess I'll leave. I'll, I'll throw NASCAR under the bus once again. But <laughs> it, this was so much. This was so much more fun to watch. I'm, I'm almost kind of wishing I was participating in it. Uh oh, well, you still have yeah. all week long to do it if you need to. Oh yeah, that's a good thing. There you but, go. <laughs> but uh, this was so much more fun to just sit back and watch. Call it as a broadcaster slash spectator. More exciting than what the Cup Series could put on here. <laughs> Their run that they had. Yeah, I throw shade at the Cup Series a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's good. Just, yeah. Because I, I, I can somewhat get the right to as a former NIS racer. <laughs> I'm, looking to, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how the racing is going to be at Fontana next week. Like what they said there, it's, it, 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 it's, it's weird. It's, it's almost like a glitchy surface. In, a, in the video game spec mm -hmm. spectrum, you, you, you say you figure it's going to be a hot, a hot as hell track, mm -hmm. but then it goes the exact opposite way, and it's like, okay, we got to reverse engineer and really figure this out. So it, it, we don't know what we're going to get at Fontana next week. All I know is it's probably it's like what he said, it's probably going to be a pack race. If it is, fo to quote Ter Ter uh, Terrell Owens when he was one of the guest celebrities at. At Kentucky, believe it or not, back in 2010, folks, watch this. Get your popcorn ready. <laughs> and, because it's uh, going to be an all up brawl. Yeah, and uh, just uh, a uh, a little bit of uh, 
Solace for our uh, good pal Antonio Estrada. He did have the uh, purple lap. He got a, a 29, uh, or excuse me, a 23.9, I think, as uh, he turned one in, in, pra- or in, uh, in the race. So not really what he wanted, but he's a little bit of solace there. But uh, yeah. way to go, uh, Antonio. So uh, that's it for tonight. Once again, your podium from Kentucky is Robert Moletzka, the third, with a yet another win here and the fixed series and the oval series excuse me and Akawazi P2 and Rodrigo Franzoni uh, with a great run uh, up 14 spots up to third join Steven Justin and myself again next week for round four the Tuesday night IndyCar oval series top split of season two of 24 as we head to the late great California Speedway in Fontana coverage begins around 8 15 p.m. Eastern again that is 8 1 5 p.m. Eastern remember new time because of the time change and everything don't worry about it, though. You can always find the correct broadcast times in your area right here on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Race First. Hey, we love bringing these races to you. Obviously, we had a blast today, but they're not easy, and they require time and money to produce. Because of your generosity and donations, we've been able to bring you IndyCar Oval Action nearly commercial-free. If you share our passion for the sport of IndyCar and enjoyed our coverage of the 4D race where Tuesday night IndyCar Oval Series top split, please take time to visit our GoFundMe page. The link is in the description. And donate to our 2024 broadcast fund. We do realize times are tough, so any contributions would be greatly appreciated. We thank you for watching and make it part of your Tuesday evenings each and every week. Now, as you know, the YouTube algorithm game is not easy, so please help support Race First with the weekly grind. Leave a comment below. Let us know you're not at tonight's race. I want to thank everyone in the chat that made a comment. Really do appreciate that. And if you enjoyed tonight's coverage, support us by smashing the like in the video. If you're new, click subscribe. And while you're at it, hit the bell for weekly reminders so you don't miss out more of Race First's other iRacing programming, including later this week, FIS at Long Beach. Me and Stevie will be there. Right, Stevie? Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Oh. Me and Stevie returning back to the FIS. <laughs> that is later this week, uh, 9. Uh, I believe that's going to be uh, right about 9 o'clock, 8.55, I think is when we go live there on Thursday night. Keep your browser set here for the most in-depth IndyCar knowledge on all of iRacing. Race First, we know what IndyCar means. Hey, Race First is Tuesday night IndyCar Oval Series top split naming rights paid for by 4D Racewear. Check out their line of made-for-sim racing gloves, shoes, and apparel. Visit them today at 4DRacewear.com. Click on the link in the description today. For business inquiries, learn more about what we do here at Race First, visit RaceFirst.com, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. You can follow all of our handles right here on Twitter, right at the bottom of your screen. So for Justin Larkamp, just uh, excuse me, Stephen Larkamp. Let, let me say oh. for so for Stephen Petschauer and Justin uh, Larkamp. Uh, there, I, I think I did it. <laughs> Everyone at Race First, I'm Gary Gatso saying all good night and thanks for watching. And thanks to all of the men and women serving in the military and as first, first responders. Godspeed, God bless, and come home safe. Catch us again next week in Fontana for the next race of the 40 race where Tuesday night IndyCar Oval Series top split. Good night. <laughs>